Fix the Car Coach, and we have a guest host today. How are you, Lauren? Good, good to see you. Thank you very much for having me. We've worked a lot together. I'll let you introduce yourself. Yeah, I'm Javier Mota from Auto Zero 260 on Sirius XM Radio on uh, different websites, so you can just Google me and you can find me. <laughs> Auto Zero to 60 is a great show, so if you haven't checked it out, definitely do that. Thank you, Lauren. So we're here driving the 2016 Mitsubishi Outlander, and we've driven quite a bit of them, actually. We drove the 2015. Which was great to see the comparison, really, like to see how it has improved. It really has, and there's a hundred new improvements. So we're going to actually show you some of those improvements, not just safety, exterior, interior. I mean, what did you think was best so far? I think uh, a lot of the cosmetic things that they've done with it, but actually the, the safety features. We They told they told us not to try the, the collision. <laughs> <laughs> the collision mitigation uh -oh. system, but we kind of tried it a little bit yeah. because we got into a situation when someone was turning and then they didn't turn, so I really had to push the brakes hard, and it, I actually felt how the system worked, so it was great. Yeah, so a lot of the safety features that maybe the previous generation didn't have, it has exactly. the lane change departure is there on the previous generation, but it's even better in forward collision mitigation. But I, it has, still has that Rockford Fosgate sound system. And that's great also. And I, I drove the GT with, with mm -hmm. the V6 engine, 200 and, uh, 224 horsepower. And that's great. I mean, for this size of vehicle, it's more than enough. Absolutely. And then there's also the force four-cylinder option. It comes two-wheel drive and four-wheel drive. But uh, we're going to take it for a spin. Yeah, let's go. We'll give you some you driving drive? impressions. Sure, I'll drive. Okay. okay. So here we are. After a fabulous lunch at this incredible winery, what a view and everything we had, huh? The food was good. <laughs> Nothing like always, good food, it's, uh, it's no always. wine. We didn't drink the wine. Oh, well, no. We're, we're, we're still driving. Exactly. We're still driving, yes. Later, we'll drink the wine. Exactly. So let's go. This is the four-cylinder model. Right. So we're not going to experience all the power that the GT has, but this is really yeah. good enough, I think. I think so. This is, this is a big take rate for them. So I'm going to set up our navigation because the version we have doesn't have nav, so... Yeah, but with that comes like the lower price too. So I mean, right, you're it's in not that, that twenty-two thousand dollar range. Exactly. No sunroof. And we can follow the Lancer. I think we're there. following <laughs> that Lancer. Let's start the sucker up. This is nice. I like the notches and, and the steering wheel. Yeah, I think they improve a lot in Piano the Piano black, which is yeah. unfortunately a huge dust collector. I know. Which and drives the only me thing nuts. That, the only thing I don't really am a fan of this is like these material, these panels that are like obviously not wood. Mm -hmm. They're plastic and, and these at least... It's wood. Exactly. At least this one matches the color of the rest. Right. When they have wood looking thing, I, I really don't like that. I don't know why they think that's premium because uh, I it's I don't not. know. You know, but I have to say everything's soft touch, which yeah, is no, really absolutely. nice. And that's I mean, one of the hundred things that they changed. Right. Literally. Yeah, and this is, this one's got the AWC, AWC, which is the all-wheel control, so you can go off-road or eco or normal yeah. or snow. So let's go and, uh, and, right. and try that a little bit. And Those third row headrests are funny looking. Well, yeah, I know. But, but it's, yeah. it's a federal government law, so you can always take them down and put them in the back. So one of the other things that they really mention and make a big deal about it is like the, how quiet it is. And it, it really is. It's quieter than the previous generation for sure. And obviously it's a small engine, a small vehicle, but like you have to take to consideration all those things but like that the front windshield is like a double panel and it has like insulation right. flame in between layers of glass and, so and lots really, of really good. lots of uh, foam padding and such to keep it quieter so you have all those gaps that are naturally in panels are now absorbing noise keeps the mvh Turn down right onto skyline boulevard see it's on the phone yeah. see i get it here too so even if I have that totally Yeah, so Lauren is trying, not only test driving the car, but like the new Apple Watch. Apple Watch, which by the way, Mitsubishi is going to integrate that also, Auto, Apple Auto, into, very soon, into the, all the models. Apple, Apple CarPlay, I think Apple it's called CarPlay. Google Auto, right? So they're going to have both Google Auto and Apple CarPlay, so my watch will integrate, my phone will integrate, it looks just like the screen. We're yeah, and they just gave us a, a really good demonstration of it and works perfectly, even though we have to say when you go to a remote location, as it just happened with your phone, when you don't have enough coverage, you're going to lose the use of that too. So like, be aware of that if you go to a remote location and you think the thing is not working, it's not working because your phone doesn't have signal, not because the system doesn't work. Which is typical of any smart device or phone, so to be expected as they say. Absolutely. So again, uh, this so handles it, really well, though. Yeah, we're here in uh, Northern California, south of San Francisco. 
Half Moon Bay, just Half north of Moon Half Moon Bay, exactly. Yeah. So there are a lot of twisties here, like a lot of really good roads actually. And again, we're doing 60 right now, yeah. 60 miles an hour. And again, we can talk, we have this conversation and we don't have to yell to each other. True. For that purpose, we can yell about it. <laughs> 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 we want. But like to have right. a normal conversation is like perfectly fine. Right, I think one of the things when you're driving a vehicle like this and and I guess you know, driving the predecessor was a really smart move. Oh, and it says brake. It's telling me brake intervention. This is, you can see the difference between the previous generation and the current one. And one of the things is this forward collision mitigation. So as long as your cruise control is on, it'll tell you, hey, you're getting a, uh, coming up on this car quickly and we can calculate, you'll probably hit them if you keep going at this speed. Exactly, one is, is one of those new technologies that a lot of people are still a little bit worried about because like too much intervention, is the car taking over, am I taking over? Mind yeah. control, always in control. But the ones you experience them the first time or maybe twice, you start to learn them and really appreciate them, I think. I agree. I mean, I really like them actually. I have it in my personal daily driver. And um, when you actually have to use it where someone's going to make a right turn and then they go really slow and you think, I know I can get around them. The car is saying, no, you can't. And it does. In, you know, actually come into play where it slows the car down. Under 20 miles an hour on this particular vehicle, like stop and go traffic, it will let you hit the car in front Absolutely. of you. Absolutely. That's going to save a lot of uh, little accidents and a lot of money, actually, because of those accidents at low speeds create a lot of damage in a car. They're right, little fender benders. And, of course, they're frustrating. And they cost you when you go to renew your insurance. So the other thing that Mitsubishi show us today is like how they're trying to change their image. Because even though the product is great, I mean, there's a lot of people that, as we were saying in the introduction, they don't give it a chance. And I think this car, at least, I think is worth doing that. I think so too. I think you're right. I mean, it, ooh, there's a police oh, officer. Ooh, we're not speeding yet. Not yet. <laughs> Trying to be good kids. Yeah, I mean, uh, if he twice. was going to stop someone, he probably stopped the Lancer before us. He, he was looking. He passed us like we were standing still. But he had the V6 and we had the four-cylinder. Yeah. So we weren't going to try and keep up. It's probably a good thing. So to, going back to the marketing campaign, I think the ads that they're going to be promoting this car with uh, are pretty smart. Oh, I have to say, you know, when you're the David and the Goliath of gigantic companies, their main competitors being Nissan and Ford and GM and Honda and Toyota and Mazda, they have huge marketing budgets so they're coming up with the hundred experts 100 hosts essentially yeah i think it's going 100, yeah, 100 spokespeople spokespeople yeah and it's funny because they have people obviously of all trades they have a plastic surgeon they have like an athlete like a, a, a ninja, ninja. <laughs> a ninja was funny an inuit which i thought was funny they and they had everyone from all different walks of life and whatever they're and this, I mean, this is a car, I think, uh, sometimes the car manufacturers do their marketing research and they think, oh, this car is going to be attracting this kind of uh, segment of the population. And then they're really surprised because this is a sporty little uh, uh, crossover. But a lot of people of all ages, can you, if you think about maybe uh, young people, 23, 25 people coming out of college, if their parents can afford it and give it to them, right. they, they will be happy with this, but also yeah. going be a person like a, a senior driver who can be like has a lot of a utility maybe they don't need the three rows of seats but I mean it has a little bit of everything for everybody I think I agree and I, I think one of the things that um, Mitsubishi really has going for it besides price which it's always had going for it is now you got a car that competes in the fastest growing segment which is a crossover utility segment that's why I wanted to talk to the person in charge of marketing Francine Arsini because she has like a tough job. I mean, like she has a great product to show, but like, again, as you were saying, she's competing against like the big boys, Toyota, right. Ford, uh, Chevrolet, and they have a good product. So it's, it's very interesting to see how that is a challenging uh, effort for them. Okay. Turn right onto road. And so the watch is telling me to turn right, that's right not, that's here. Not for you. Oh, right here? Well, that's because we're taking the oh. other Take route. Turn and turn left see, it's telling me to. Road. Excellent. Turn left to merge up to I-280 North. Okay, we got it. Well, we're on our route back to San Francisco, Lauren. It was a pleasure. I always wanted to drive with you. Uh, yeah, me different too. programs that we've been uh, around uh, the country. We never had a chance until today, and uh, I'm really happy that we did it. I am as well. I mean, it's great to get a different perspective from different people. I draw, like to switch up the co-host, and everyone has a different perspective. It's just like cars. You know, P.T. Barnum says there's a butt for every seat, so <laughs> just like there's a journalist for every viewpoint, I think is pretty accurate. 
Excellent. Yeah, that's true. And I uh, want to switch drivers with you in a little bit because I want to get your opinion of driving this, but driving on these switchback roads, and yeah, it's at slow speeds. This is a much more confident car than the previous vehicle. Oh, absolutely. By a long all, shot. all the engineering that goes behind that, like you can, it shows right here. Right. And I think it's also smart of Mitsubishi, one of the things we're getting back to marketing, is they really want to hit the Spanish market and the Spanish-speaking market. And I, and I have to say, missing the Latino market would be very foolish of them, but it's a huge market. I think it's place. foolish for anybody. Not well, only, well, not some, some people so don't, don't market that way. They figure, well, if they buy the car, they do, which is dumb because you know the market segment's growing. And, and if you want to sell the car the same vehicle all around the world, then you better address every I, walk I, of life. Exactly. I, 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 don't know. I think I mentioned to you in our conversations a lot of people think they know about the Hispanic population in the US, but they don't do much about it. And it's really simple when you put it like this. I mean, there's about 50 million Hispanics in the US. Maybe there's like 10 million or 15 that don't speak any Spanish, actually. Mm -hmm. It might be Hernandez, Gonzalez, or Perez, but they don't speak Spanish. Yeah. Then you have another 5 million that maybe don't speak any English, like newcomers, right. migrant workers, and that. So in between, you have 35, 30, 35 million Hispanics who are bilingual. Wow. So you can clearly say that there are more bilingual Hispanics in the US than Canadians in Canada with a buying you know, power of 1.5 trillion. That's really good statistics. So, Actually, you should say that again because I think that's really important for everyone to know that. Say yeah, that, that's really uh, great I'll information. Again. So, in, in, in short, 30 to 35 million bilingual Hispanics, that's more, you can say that in the US there are more bilingual Hispanics that there are Canadians in Canada. And not only that, it's unbelievable. It's 1.5 trillion buying power, which grew by 50% in the past five years. So when they talk wow. about emerging markets, and they, an look around, market. they, they, they look around like India, Brazil, you have one right here. It's already within the system. You just have to pay attention to it and like do something with it. And a smart car maker knows to make an ad specifically for that marketplace. Don't voice it over exactly. with someone who speaks Spanish <laughs> and, because it looks like an old uh, ninja movie, you know? Exactly. In all justice, I have to say, it's not easy either because True. like all Hispanics are not the same. Some people True. think that everybody from the the Rio Grande to the South is the same. Mexicans are different from Argentinians, and Argentinians are different from Colombians, and Colombians are different from Chileans. So and I have it's friends from easy. Puerto Rico and the Dominican, and exactly. they speak Spanish as well. So it's different, but it's there, and they should pay attention. Absolutely. Now, one of the other things is, as far as getting this, we're talking about different markets, millennials, this is a great starter car. If you have kids going off to college and you're thinking, I'd like to put them in something safe, maybe they go into snowy country. This is certainly a car to consider because you think I've got you know twenty five thousand dollars to spend. Exactly. I want I want them in a car that's got the current safety, something that I don't have to worry about. But you know you need to have them get all their dorm stuff back and forth. And both my kids went off to college with cars, and and there's nothing yeah. worse than not having room for everything. And also, I think they're gonna like it. I mean, this is a good looking car. Yeah, and it's edgy. And, and again, selling to the millennial marketplace is sort of like selling to the Latino marketplace. You really have to know it, you have to address it. And I think they've done it by bringing in a Rockford Fosgate sound system. Which is great. Yes, really nice sounding. And not too many manufacturers use it, but I tell you what, if you like the beat and you like the bass, you're gonna like the sound system. Great. I'm so, pull over up here go back to San here. Francisco. Yeah. I had a chance to drive and you had a chance to drive all three versions so what do you think i think it's really great i mean for this segment which is ultra competitive you start like around 22 and go around a little bit over 30. you get a lot for this kind of car i think people should like know about mitsubishi but sometimes they don't explore it as much and i think they should with this vehicle i think they overlook mitsubishi and it's a shame because they do have a great product so this is one of the things that I, the highlights for me is it handles better Absolutely. It looks better yeah. all the way around. Everything from the standard 18-inch wheels, the LED headlights and taillights. I mean, they did a nice job redesigning this. Yeah, and a lot of nice uh, detailing the interior, which I really like. And because, again, for the price, you get a lot. I mean, you expect that maybe in a car that is much more expensive. Yeah, and when you look at it, it looks like a $40,000 car. Exactly, for 30. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you load it up, you're going to be like 36. So, Something like that. So I think getting close to 40, but not yet. Yeah, yeah, but, you know, I think you're getting a lot of car for your money. So when you're looking for a you know, crossover utility, definitely put this on your drive list for sure. Absolutely, yeah. at least they give it a try. It's, it's worth doing it. Right. Well, thank you for riding with us today. No, thank you, Lauren. Yeah, thank you. See you next time. Yeah, check out.